Hey guys, welcome back to another vintage 1980s edged weapon review. What you're looking at is a ad in a catalog in a magazine <laughs> dated March 1987. This sword that you can you could have bought in at $110 plus shipping and handling, we have one right here on the table this one right here and I'm very excited to do this review finally uh, I had it for about a year and a few months I just never wanted or well I shouldn't say never wanted I wanted it <laughs> I wanted it okay I wanted to do a video of it it's just you know I never found the right time and I never got motivated to do it well, tonight is different. I'm going to do it. So, check this out. A beautiful sword. It is stainless steel. It's 420. I mean, beautiful. I'm going to read you what the ad says. So, everybody knows, for the most part, if you've been a long-time subscriber, you know that I have dyslexia. And I do have trouble pronouncing certain words but what the hell I'm still gonna read it so starting from here it says real steel not aluminum or die cast blade is stainless steel AISI 420 with 45% carbon and 13% chrome hardened to 4850 Rockwell the finest, the strongest, the most authentic <laughs> ninja sword we have ever offered. Blades are already sharp and will accept additional sharpening. Includes a 25 inch long blade. It is shorter than a samurai sword, so it is easy to draw while being worn on the back. Hamon wavy temper line running down both sides of blade. Oversized square guard, three three quarters inch square. A straight angle on the blade tip instead of curved. Metal point on scabbard for digging and a hole on the tip of scabbard to make a breathing tube. Uncased, the sword is 35 and a half inches overall. Handle is a traditional wrapped design with a small Minuki dragon under the wrapping on each side. You will not be disappointed. This is a really handsome steel ninja sword. <laughs> okay, so that is pretty badass. And again... So this was at the height of the ninja craze. And uh, if you had this, you were the cool kid on the block. So look at that uh, hamon there. Brushed. Beautiful. I mean, a kick-ass sword. Okay, so this is where you could have ordered it from. You have your ninja patches, you have your ninja belt buckles, you have your ninja posters by Sho Kasugi. And uh, it would be a highlight of my life if I could meet this man in person. I would cherish that for the rest of my life if I could ever meet him. He was a great inspiration. I loved his movies and uh, so forth. More details on that, but uh, keep those later on in, in another video, basically. So here's your socks, here's your boots, here's your shoes. These have rubber so your feet won't get wet. Here's your uniforms, more uniforms, a mask, a ninja star, and that's about it. Here's your bukens right there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful sword, 
And I can't believe, check it out, we have one right here. So, where you could have got this is... Look, Chuck Norris! Do you guys remember Chuck Norris? <laughs> People my age? Hell yeah, we do. So, this is... March 1987. The original Ninja. <laughs> so, that's the magazine. If you guys really want to try and find one on Amazon or eBay. So, let's talk about this sword. Now, this is an amazing sword. Um, it is just freaking badass. It's iconic, okay? It's legendary. Um, for the most part, let me just jump in right away and say that it has been over 10 or over 11 years since I made my last Ninja Sword video. The reason for that was because after my Paul Chen Ninja Sword video, I got bombarded with hate comments, emails, and messages. Everybody calling me, I'm an idiot, I'm a moron, I'm retarded. I mean, just on and on and on. Anyway, in that video, I disabled the comments, and um, I left the video up, but I just took off the, the ability to put comments. Um, so, after that, I just got discouraged, and I never made another Ninja Sword video until this one here. So, for the most part, I want to say that all these people jumping on that bandwagon calling me an idiot for believing that this could be a ninja sword. You guys need, I mean, really, you need to know your research, man. You need to go out and study. Because from instructors to students, from students to, again, teachers and so forth, okay? Everybody saying, oh, yeah, you know, the straight katana with a square suba, that never existed in the history of Japan. It never did. And yet, there are documentation, there are drawings that, yes, in the 1600s, in the 1800s, from 19, uh, from 19, uh, I don't know, 1901, let's put it this way, 1901 to 1999, there have been, uh, again, documents showing that ninjas, at least, you know, in the early 19, uh, there were ninja comics and all this stuff way before the 1980s that showed a straight katana with a square suba. Before that time, let's say 1600s, they have been foot soldiers, uh, samurai, that had straight katanas with square subas. You're telling me in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, thousands of these straight sworded, square guarded katanas, not one has ever been in the hands of a ninja? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Give me a freaking break, man. Really? Anyway, um, for the most part, I have. Uh, there's a guy here on YouTube, and I'm going to put his links in the description underneath this video. Please go look at his videos. He explains about these straighted, straight uh, blade katanas with square guards. He explains about them. So if you don't believe me and you just want to call me an idiot, okay, fine. But you just showed yourself that you are one of those people that does not think for yourself and you want to believe uh, <laughs> basically what some person tells you to believe basically like uh, let's just say this way a Chinese or even somebody from Britain or a German telling somebody else about Native Americans I mean really who do you think knows more an actual Native American that was brought up in this tradition? 
or somebody that was outside that doesn't know nothing but is looking in and saying, oh, that's not real. You're stupid for believing that. <laughs> really? Oh, man, that is great. Okay, so what we have here, right here, is a samurai sword or a katana, basic traditional style. And the reason I bring this up is because in most cases, I would assume, when a ninja or a samurai would meet, the samurai would have, obviously, these two with him. The ninja, in, let's say, let's say, in a few scenarios, if for whatever reason the ninja did carry a katana, he would carry it this way, the top way, the way you see it there. So the samurai would think to himself, I think I can draw my sword out faster than he can and I could take care of business and save my lord, basically. But again, the ninja was crafty, was, um, well, again, crafty. So what he would do is he would put a wakuzashi blade in the mountings of a katana. So when he would pull out his sword, it would be a hell of a lot faster than the samurai. The ninja would already take care of business, get the hell out of dodge, and go back to his lord for whatever mission that he was on to begin with. So with that being said, let's move down to the actual ninja sword. Okay. So... Okay, this is a beautiful 1980s made, 1980s sold, and then floated around until I bought it, and it's here in front of you guys. And, uh, oh, man, this is a beautiful sword. I love this sword. It's for my decoration. It's a display piece. So, let's focus on, in on that dragon Minuki. Okay, that's cool. Come on this side. Look at this one. Come on, camera. You can focus. There you go. Okay. You can look at the back here. Very, very cool. Nothing special about the handle. It's plastic. And this is made of one piece. So, nice. Okay. And then here is the Suba. Freaking huge. The paint is chipping off from, again, years of just handling marks and moving it here, moving it there, and uh, I just, I love that sound. One more time. Freaking awesome. <laughs> okay, so after so many years, the Suba had a little bit of play in it, so I took this off another sword, and I just added it to this ninja sword here. So, now that you saw the whole thing, here is the Tang. There is no markings whatsoever, such as made in Japan, made in China, Taiwan, 440 steel or 420 steel. There's nothing like that. It's just plain steel. As in, no markings at all. Okay, so now we pull it out. Look at that. Holy crap, is that badass or what? <laughs> so, I guess if you want to see the blade before I put it all back together, which I think would look better if I had it all put back together, but uh, look at that. Again, this is not mint condition. Um, this is the way I got it, and it looks pretty damn mint condition to me. 
So, yes, there is a few scratches, but nothing major, nothing broken, nothing chipped, nothing cracked. It's beautiful. Okay, I am going to put it back together, so let me take this out of the frame here a little bit. And let me... get our little peg here and there you go all back together let me just wipe down the blade a little bit and again this is beautiful I freaking love it it's in my uh, display case and uh, it's just a collector's piece for me. I think it's badass to have something from the 80s that was probably the closest thing that you could have bought in, uh, to an actual real uh, katana back then, I mean. So that is a brushed Hamon on the steel. It's not a real Hamon. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure you guys know that already. <laughs> I don't need to say that, but there you go. And to see how sharp it is, a lot of people I have heard that they complain that uh, stainless steel does not hold an edge and it's really bad and it's always dull and all that stuff. Now, again, I'm going to keep showing, going up the blade, that the entire blade is razor sharp, not just part of it. Let's go from the bottom again. Middle, upper middle, <laughs> and closer to the tip. And right at the tip so let's see so there you go razor sharp and just in case you're still not convinced how can you tell if it's razor sharp you get a piece of paper flat you lay it flat you lay the blade flat so let's start from the very beginning of the blade and look at that you see how it cuts into the blade that's shaving the, the paper so that is how you know that this is a razor blade. And that is where I'm pressing the paper a little bit. So that's why it keeps cutting in two. <laughs> and I'm trying my best not to cut my fingers. So as you can see right here. And I'm going, we started here, we're going up this way. This way you can see that it's not just one part of the blade that's sharp and I keep cutting it with that part of the blade. I'm going, or at least I'm moving upwards. So that is how you know that it's a razor blade, where you just lay it flat, and at sometimes you don't have to uh, move it sideways. You can just push on it, and it will cut. So, but doing that is a little bit more scary because you're just trying to cut this way, 
and as you can see it already cut a little bit of my finger there right here right there Let's see if I can show you that <laughs> so yeah you can see that there so yeah this is a beautiful sword very cool I'm very lucky to have it and uh, just gorgeous again 1987 when you could have ordered it I'm pretty sure before that time and a little after that time you could have still ordered the same sword here let's put it in here before we do that here's the hole for the aluminum so you can breathe if you have it in the water you stick it out a little bit from far away it looks like a turtle's head so just letting you guys know that as well this is aluminum and there is no hidden dagger in here this is all one piece so for those of you that say well that's not a real ninja sword because it doesn't have a hidden dagger in it mind you not all ninja swords or samurai swords were the same okay so there is that right there and uh, for my Paul Chen well there's not really much to talk about I mean I added 550 paracord on it it's still as nice as I got it since the last video that I showed and uh, let's pull this one out it took me years to take off all the rust and as you can see the hum one is very beautiful So just in case you want to see this one cut paper, I don't mind because, well, this is my training sword here, my go-to. So let's see. So again guys, please go look at those links in the description and uh, just because a lot of people call you an idiot like they did with me shows that, you know, how much they know <laughs> when they look at the facts and the historical documents, pictures and all that they're going to eat their words so let's put it back in the sheath here so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed these few parts of uh, edged weapons reviews and after this I'm going to uh, go back to making videos on toys and action figures so stay tuned and uh, talk to you guys later.